All right. Um, so we are recording. So a couple things. Um, technical conference. I'm not gonna, you know, uh, I'm not gonna uh, I belabor it over and over again. But uh, you are going to, at the very least, if you have time, if you want to attend, you should be attending. Notice how um, I don't have my uh, my AISC steel manual reminder on here because by now hopefully I've beat it into the ground enough that you should be bringing it every day. And if you don't have your steel manual, you, you will earn one of these. So, so be, be aware of that. Okay, um, real quick. So, hey, 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 now, now, no, not, well, I will leave you two to, to negotiate that arrangement. All right. Um, just so everybody's aware, class is canceled on Wednesday. So, uh, because I will not be in West Virginia. Um, I will be in uh, Florida on a research trip. So, I'll be gone for, uh, for Wednesday. So, make sure you're aware of that. Okay. What's that? Uh, it's a meeting with the agency that funds my research. So, they want to make sure that I'm doing my work so, and all of that. Okay. Um, any questions on anything? Um, we don't have a, a homework outstanding in here. That's not going to come until Friday. I do have a homework uh, for those of you in concrete design, but it's not going to be due for a while, so you've got plenty of time. Is everybody good so far? Okay. So what I'd like to cover today is this. I'd like to... Um, get back into gross area and net area computations. I'd like to uh, also delve into shear lag factors a little bit and get into slenderness limits because that'll set the stage for a full-blown tension member analysis and then after that uh, a full-blown design example. Um, but before I get into that, does anybody have any questions about the gross area and net area stuff we did last time? Because I want to start a want to kind of start a, to, to bring that into the, uh, the big picture aspects of what we're talking about. Everybody good so far? Okay. <clears throat> so let me try and explain and go back and, and explain why it is we're, we're talking about a lot of this stuff. So I want to go back to, uh, to this. So <clears throat> if you recall, the, for this first portion of the course, we're talking about tension members. You know, we're taking a piece of steel and we're yanking on it. And we're trying to ascertain its pertinent limit states. Now, the first limit state that we discussed was basically uh, the main member of the uh, uh, bo or the main body of the member uh, uh, reaching Fy, and we call that yielding in the gross section. Now, to compute the capacity of an element according to yielding in the gross section, the nominal capacity is Fy times the gross area. So, by now, you all should know how to compute the gross area. You either uh, you know, samurai sword or lightsaber through the section, start adding up the areas, or you look it up, right? That's what the manual's for. So if you take that area and multiply it by the yield stress, you'll get a nominal capacity, a P sub N. If you want a design capacity, you need phi P sub N. So you would take that and adjust it by phi, which for gross section yielding, phi is 0.9. Okay, now that's gross section yielding. Now, net section fracture, uh, we do something very similar, okay? We take the tensile stress and we multiply that by the effective net area. Now, how do we compute effective net area? We take the net area and we adjust it by a shear lag factor. So, what we've been talking about for the past little bit is gross area and net area. Okay? After we talk about net area, we're going to talk about U. We're going to talk about this shear lag factor and how we uh, compute that. Once we've got uh, gross and net area down and we've got shear lag factors down, we'll understand how to compute uh, tension member capacity. And if we understand that, we can start to delve into the world of, well, if I have a load, how do I select a tension member? And then we're getting into uh, steel design. Now, let me go forward a little bit. So we you know, discussed some, some parameters associated with gross and net area, you know, the difference between a bolt diameter and a hole diameter. Uh, and why we compute those various uh, uh, provisions. We got into parallel connections. You know, how do we compute the net area of a, a section with a grid-like pattern uh, of bolts? So we did, uh, you know, a plate, and then we had a, a rolled section. 
And then we started to, an or started to tackle this question. How do we address a, a, a bolt arrangement that's staggered, okay, that, that uh, uh, has sort of a, a diagonal pattern to it? And remember, the reason why you're laying out a bolt pattern like this is ultimately to increase the net area. For each one of those diagonal paths, we get a sort of a, a, a benefit uh, in terms of net area by adding what we call a stagger factor. Now, so you, the thing that sucks about, about uh, net area calcs for staggered paths is you really kind of just have to uh, assess all of them. So we have, uh, you know, this is a potential failure path, here's a potential failure path, and, and here's another one. Okay. For each potential failure path, we have a different number of uh, bolts that we need to subtract, and we have a different number of stagger factors that we need to uh, add as well. So to compute a stagger factor, it's pretty straightforward. It's just S squared over 4G times the thickness, S being your longitudinal spacing or the spacing parallel to the load, and then G is your transverse spacing or your gauge spacing, and that's perpendicular to the, uh, to the load. And, of course, T is your, your thickness. Now, the one thing I want to make sure everybody's clear on is this whole concept of the lead line of bolts. So if you've got a connection, the lead line is the line of, or the, the, the group of bolts that if the member fractures along that line, all of the bolts shall remain intact. So, um, for instance, if we have a path like this, would the path fall on the lead line? And the answer is yes, because all the bolts remain intact. If we did this one and we said yes, that remains intact, that one, yes, they remain intact, but this one, the answer is no, because if the plate fractures along that path and separates, will have sheared off that front bolt. Um, and the reason why we don't account for uh, that section is because you might have a lower net area. It's very possible that that would happen. But that particular section is seeing less load than the section along the lead line because this bolt uh, has taken over. So to give you kind of an, uh, a, a rough estimate of what's going on, there's what, seven bolts in this connection? So this particular cross-section is only seeing roughly six-sevenths of the applied load. So it might have a lower net area, but it's seeing less load, so it's not really apples to apples if you uh, restrict everything to the, uh, to the lead line. So here's a more uh, finalized expression for net area for bolted connections. We take the gross area, we subtract out any uh, bolt holes, and then we add any appropriate stagger factors. And then that's for bolted connections, for welded connections, because we're not removing any uh, material from the member to uh, connect it, the net area just equals the gross area. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy. <coughs> All right. Everybody good so far? Okay. So we started to look at this particular connection, and we, uh, we, we did some math with it. For instance, the, uh, uh, or the longitudinal spacing S was this 1.5 inches, and the gauge spacing G was three and a half inches. Everybody remember that? Because if we're talking about, you know, a particular diagonal path, let's say something like this, you know, G is going to be 3.5 inches from here to here, and then S is 1.5. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So we uh, had started to do some calcs, and we didn't quite finish them, but this will help us out. So we have a plate that's 12 inches by 1 inches, so we know the gross area is going to be 12 square inches. We know the bolts are 3 quarter inch diameter bolts, so the holes are 7 eighths inches uh, in diameter. Um, so we can calculate the area of a hole by just saying 7 eighths times the thickness. And then we went ahead and computed a stagger factor and uh, just S, S squared T over 4G and got that to be a 0.161. Everybody good? Okay. <coughs> now, what I want to do is this. Um, let's see, I might be able to, to do this all on one slide. We'll, we'll see. Okay. I want to start to identify potential failure paths for this connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this connection, but I'm going to add some, uh, some information to this. So let's see what we got. We got a member that goes something like this, something like that. 
and we are applying some load P. So it's a member that's being subjected to tension. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the bolt pattern looks something about like this. We've got something like that, something like that, 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 and that. Fair point? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to um, add some labels to this connection to help our naming convention. So let's see. I'm going to say that this point right here, we're going to say that's A. This point right here, that's B. We're going to say this one is C. This is D. This is E. Then we're going to say this point right here is F. And this point right here is G. Notice how all of my labels are uh, gravitated towards the left end of the connection, not the right end, right? Remember, the left end of the connection, that's the lead line, right? Because if I'm grabbing this member and yanking on it, I'm going to be grabbing from out here. So if I grab and yank, everything surrounding this uh, region of the connection right here, that's the lead line. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Now, um, now help me out. Let's, let's make a list of possible failure paths. Let's make a list of possible failure paths. So I, I want somebody out there to write out, use, I mean, so that's why we listed these letters here so that we can all make sure we're referencing the same thing. Somebody spit out a potential failure path for this connection. Say it again. ADF. Okay, so ADF is a very potential uh, failure path. So A, D, F. And that's going to look something something like that, right? That's a potential failure path for this connection. Something else. Let's, let's list another one. B, C, D, F. Okay, that's one. So, B, C, D, F. So that's going to look something about, something about like that, right? What's another one? Okay, B, C, D, E, G. So that's going to go down, over, down, down like that, right? Is there one that we missed? Say it again. A, D, E, G. Now, why, don't, why didn't we list that? It's the same as this one, right? So, but I actually am going to put this. I'm going to say A, D, E, G here because it's technically the same. The connection's symmetric. Everything's uh, symmetric about the center line of bolt, so the math isn't going to change. Okay? Now, one thing I will point out, this particular connection is symmetric. It might not be in, in other instances, so you definitely want to make sure you're identifying them appropriately. Everybody all right with that? Okay. <coughs> now, let's also be clear on a couple things before we start doing our, our calculations. Remind me, okay, gross area was what? Making sure you all referencing everything. 12 square inches. The area of a hole was what? 7 eighths or 0 0.875. And what was a stagger factor? One six one. All right, sound good? And remember, to calculate the net area, we take the gross area, we subtract out the number of holes, and we add the appropriate number of stagger factors, right? Sound good? So I'll even write that out. I'll even put that down here. So net area equals the gross area minus the sum of the holes plus the sum of the stagger factors. 
Okay. Everybody all right with that? All right. <coughs> Let's start. Uh, the, way, the way that I go about this, I think it's easiest to just sort of draw a big table. So let's look at this. Let's, um, I think I can fit all this right here, and I, I think I'm going to try and do that. All right. So I'm going to draw out a little table, and I'm going to do, I'm going to list off my, my path. So, so let's do the first one. The first path was ADF, okay? Now, help me out. If you're looking at path ADF, how many bolt holes are you going to subtract? One. So if I list bolt holes, bolt holes, and I list those as a negative, I need to subtract one bolt hole. Everybody okay with that? Now, how many stagger factors do I need to add to this? How many stagger factors, or how many staggered paths are there for ADF? For ADF. ADF is just this path right here. So that would be zero. Okay, so. So we'll say that those values are added. Okay. So help me out. For path ADF, how would we compute the net area? Well, we take the gross area and we would subtract how many of these and add how many of these. So tell me what that is. What's that? You're, yeah, you're removing that material for the bolt holes. So you subtract the bolt holes, add the stagger factors. So we'll say net area over here, and that's going to be in inches squared. So what does that come out to be? 11, well, yeah, okay. So we'll say 11.13, something like that. Just keep it basic. Sound good? Now let's take the next one. So the next one we have listed is what? BCDF? or ADEG, all right? How many bolts are we subtracting from those paths? From either one, it doesn't matter. Two, right? Now, how many diagonal paths occur on each of those, uh, each of those paths? One. So for that, we're going to subtract two bolts. So, you know, if we go this way, or go that way. We're subtracting two bolt holes, but we're adding one diagonal path for each connection. So this minus two of these plus one of those. And what do you got? Ten point four one. All right. Last one. So. This one should probably go pretty quick. Help me out. How many bolts are we subtracting? Three. How many diagonal paths? Two. So what do we got? Say it again. 9.72. Zero. Everybody else get that? Okay. Everybody okay with this? Now, you tell me, if you're taking this member and yanking on it, which path do you think that this member will fail on first? The top one, the middle one, or the bottom one? The bottom one, right? In other words, if I'm yanking on it, it's going to fail along the path of least resistance. This path, this last one, is going to offer the least resistance because it has the least amount of area. So if I'm going to say, okay, what is the net area of this connection? The net area is 9.70 inches squared.
Now, does that make sense? Anybody have any questions? This isn't too bad, is it? Pretty straightforward. Well, in what way? Are you saying just the bolt's just going to happen to fail by itself? or? Let me let me let me ask you uh, a follow up, and let's see if this makes sense. So, um, let's say then that I'm applying load to this connection. Let's say I'm putting 700 kips on it. Okay. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts in it, right? Okay. So a reasonable assumption might be that if I'm just looking at the bolts, just the bolts, ignoring the plate. Would a reasonable assumption be that each bolt is seeing about 100 kips? Okay, so in that respect, is, if I'm just looking at the bolt, is there a, uh, a chance that one bolt would, you see what I'm saying, that one bolt would fail over the other if they're all seeing an equal amount of load? Does that, does that make sense? What I'm getting at is that if we're, if we're looking at the, the bolts, which is a separate issue, we're assuming that all the bolts are going to be equally loaded. So seeing, you know, this bolt fail before the, you know, before this one or something, that's not really a, an assessment that we would make in design because we're just going to assume they're all equally loaded. Now, if you want to talk about the plate, if you want to talk about the plate failing along B, C, E, G, I mean, if you want to, if you want to meet a go that net area calc, I'm more than happy to, but you're going to see it's not going to govern. I'll tell you what, do this, all right? What would the net area be if we went along B, C, E, G? How many bolt holes would we subtract? Two. How many stagger factors? Zero. Do that math. Tell me what you get. Ten point two five. Okay, okay. Now, first off, that area is more than this one. Okay, so right off the bat, it wouldn't go. But let's say it did. Let's live in the world that it did. So you got what? Ten point two something. Ten point two five. Okay, that area only course. It doesn't correspond to all of the load because see, this bolt's already given up. This section right here is not seeing. 100% of the load. It's only seeing about, what, 85% of it or something like that because one bolt's given up. Okay? So what you would have to do in order to compare apples to apples is do this. Okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts, right? Seven bolts, right? Along this path, one of them has given up. Does that make sense? Okay. So you got, I'll, I'll sort of do this over here on the side. I'll say B, C, E, G. You got an area of 10.25? 10.25. But that corresponds to, what I'll say is this, that only corresponds to six sevenths of the load. Does that make sense? Because one bolt has given up. It's not seeing the full amount of the stress. To compare this value to these would be like comparing apples to, ap or apples to oranges because all of these paths, they see 100% of that load. Everybody okay with that? If you want to compare apples to apples, what you will have to do to this number is this. You'll have to take um, 10.25 and multiply it by the reciprocal. That way you're comparing apples to apples. What do you get when you do that? 11.96. So this is the value that you would compare to these. This would be an apples to apples comparison. Now this one's bigger than all of these, right? 
So to, to go back to your question, that was just eliminating one bolt. What if we started cutting sections like right here and right here and right here? It would, it would just get even worse, right? Does that make sense? So that's why we never check anything beyond the lead line because this will always, almost always happen, like always, okay? Is that, is, does that help answer your question? Everybody else? Okay, so moral of the story, lead line only, all right? Everybody good? All right, anything else? All right, okay. What? I got, people are chuckling, goodness. I haven't even told any jokes yet, which is sort of, sort of strange for me. It's, it wasn't even a joke. Literally, walk into the AISI headquarters in, in Washington, D.C. Steelers logo right there on the wall. But, yeah. What's that? Oh. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to do this problem, uh, which is a little different. This is going to be a staggered connection, but the staggered connection jumps across different elements uh, of the angle. So we've got an angled connection that's being bolted here and here, but notice how there's a stagger along the, uh, the, 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 the legs. Um, we're going to do a, a, a little bit of a dimensional trick with this, but ultimately um, the goal is to try and take this and turn it into a plate. Okay, So we'll, we'll take our time with this, but I really want to Make sure this makes sense. Okay. Oh. All right. So L7 by 4 by 5 eighths. So you all have this. I'm going to add some dimensions and ultimately try and increase the, uh, the clarity of what's going on. So 3B. Okay. First off, we have an L7 by 4 by 5 eighths. Okay. So our goal is to compute the, uh, the net area. What's the first step in computing the net area? What is the gross area of an L7 by 4 by 5 eighths? All right. 7.79? No, see, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So notice what everybody's doing, they're opening their manuals. The manuals that everybody brought to class, right? That everybody brought to class, right? Remember. All right, so you tell me. Okay, so first off, you're, okay, you're a little far ahead. Okay, so you need to go to the angle section, the L section. <laughs> Say it again. 6.5. Okay, 6.5. I've got a 6.5. Anybody else get that? Yes. All right, so 6.5. Oh, hold on. Whoop. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that the gross area is 6.50 inches squared. Now, what table did you look that up in? Table 1-7, and what page did you find that on? 1-42. Okay, so for those of you that are still looking, now you know where to find this. I, I'm not going to move forward until everybody's got this. So, okay. You got it? You're on there. You're on there. There we go. Not my I know, I know. It's a Monday. Oh. Case of the and and he, he's not there. No. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's in the mail. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll I'll forgive you for that. It's in the mail. All right. And I see you got that. All right. So, everybody good? Okay. So good. This is stuff. This is stuff I want to make sure you're familiar with. All right. Now, here here's a here's a trick question. What is the thickness of those uh, of those legs going to be? How about this? Mr. Schaffer, what's the thickness of the, the angle legs going to be? Uh, just draw like it's a scale. <laughs> uh, three quarters of an inch. 
You don't need the drawing. There we go. You know that, but the point I'm making, it's not listed in the table. It's not there, you know. So I, I could see instances where you're like, how thick is it? You sit there staring at it. It's right there. It's the 5 eighths. So. You, okay, that, that was... That was that was pretty close. I will give you that, but 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 it isn't it isn't CE 414 horseshoes or, or CE 414 hand grenades. You know. All right. Now, what's our bolt diameter? Three quarters of an inch. So so bolts. I'll just do bolts. So the diameter of a bolt is three quarters of an inch. So therefore, the hole diameter is what? Seven eighths of an inch. So therefore, the hole area is what? Like how do we compute it? What's the formula? There you go. So the diameter of the hole times the thickness, which is seven eighths times five-eighths. So if you want, you could say that's what, 35, 60 fourths or something like that. Somebody give me a decimal. We'll say three decimal places. Five, four, seven. Got a second on that? Nobody even, oh. It really is Monday, isn't it? All right, okay. Now, everybody good so far? Okay. Well, all right, this is something you'll, you'll want to pay attention to because I want you all to follow along with me on this, all right? Okay, so let's, let's draft out our angle. So our angle, so I'll say failure pass. Okay, so follow along with me on this. I'm going to need your help. Now, we have an angle that looks something like this, and I'm going to do my best to try and draw it to the appropriate depth and dimension. Okay. Now, I've got a bolt hole that's somewhere about right here, and the center of that hole about like that, right? And I have two bolts uh, down here in this longer leg. So... What do I have? I've got something like this and something like this. Okay. Now, hopefully you, you see by the scale that the longer leg is the one that's 7 inches and this is 4 inches, right? Everybody okay with that? All right. So we'll do this. We'll do this. And we'll say seven inches. Okay. Yes, yes. That's a good question. From from edge to edge. Yes. So this one is from here to here, and that dimension is four inches. Okay. Now. Let's see if we can do some figuring here. Okay, so help me out. What is this dimension right here? What's that dimension? Say it again. Three and three-eighths. So this is three and three-eighths of an inch. Everybody with me on that? Okay. Now. What is this dimension? One and a half. So we'll say that right there. Okay. So, yes, sir. Didn't it say right there? All right. So, help me out. What then 
is that dimension. Let's do this one in a decimal format. Say it again. Okay, we got 1.625. Anybody second that? I got a lot of people saying 1.875. So all, all it is, take the 3 and 3 eighths and take an inch and a half off of that. So you should get 1.875. Everybody get that? Are you good? Did you get that? Okay. All right, all right. Okay. Help me out with a couple things. So um, now help me out on this end. So this dimension or the dimensions that we have right here. Do we have the center to center spacing? Three inches. Um, do we have the edge spacing right here? One and a half. So help me out. What's this dimension right here? Two and a half. Everybody okay with this? Is this all right? Simple stuff, but the details, right? Details add up. Okay. Now. That? No. No, I'm good for now. Here's, here's why we really needed to investigate this, okay? And I know this is going to seem kind of strange, but we've got to get our dimensions right, okay? Again, what's our secret weapon? Uh, samurai sword or lightsaber, right? So what I'm going to do is this. This is what I'm going to do. Right here along this green dashed line, okay, I'm going to chop this part off, okay? And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it on top like that. Everybody okay with that? I'm going to turn the angle into an equivalent plate, okay? Now, would you agree then that when if, if I cut right here and then I stack, it's going to look something about like this. It's going to go, I'm going to have a plate. I'm going to have, let's see, a hole down here, a hole here, then a hole somewhere up here, and I'm going to have that sort of part like that. All right, so would you agree that physically the dimensions would look something like this? I would take this, stick it on top, and then it would look something like that. Everybody okay with that? Well, the reason why we dug into this so much is because we needed the dimensions. So I want to start stacking these dimensions up and seeing what we get. So I want to dimension each of these parts out. So we'll start out with the simple ones, and we'll get to the more complicated ones as we go. Let's start off with the very bottom. What's this? And what's this? Three. Okay, so one and a half inches and three inches. What about that one on the way tippy top? What is that? One and a half inches. Okay, now, this one right here, what is that? Say it again. 4.375. Now, how did you get that? All right. Now, does everybody understand that? You see, what am I doing? I'm taking this and I'm stacking it on top. So this was already two and a half inches, and then I'm stacking this, which means I need this extra bit on top, and that's the 1.875. Everybody okay with that? That's important, okay? That really is important to make sure that you understand that. Any questions? Okay. 
Am I good to move on? Okay. So, I'm, I'm, I assume everybody's got that. Okay. So, failure pass. Okay. So, what I should have is a plate that looks something about like this. Okay. Now, I'm also going to have this sort of dashed line moving through it, and that's where I samurai sorted and stacked on top. So I'm going to have this, 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 uh, this, and that, this, and that. Is everybody seeing how I'm formulating that from the, the, the sketch that you've got? Okay. Now, let's see. So... So I'm yanking on this like so. So help me out. Does the lead line wrap around the bolts on the left side of the connection or the right side of the connection? Right side. So what I ought to be doing is I ought to be saying, you know, this is bolt A. This is bolt B. This is bolt C. This is bolt D. This is bolt E. Now, help me out. Um, let's see. First off, what are our possible failure paths? Like, how many of them do we have? Let's start listing some. What's the first failure path that you see? A, B, D, E. So A, B, D, E. And that's going to look something about like that, right? Now, what's the other one? There we go. And that's going to kind of go down, and then it's going to kind of go about like that. Going to go about like that, right? Now, help me out. What's the problem with the staggered path here and the staggered path here? They're not the same because they've got different gauge distances. Now, let's be clear. The, the, the longitudinal spacing is the same. And what is this distance right here? Two inches. So that's S equals two inches, right? but the gauge spacings are not. We've got two different gauge spacings. So what I'll do is I'll say this. So we'll say G1 and G2. So what's G1 and G2? What's the top one? And the bottom one, three. Make sense? Now, is everybody okay with that? Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we can calculate our net area pretty directly. So we've got um, the net area for, we'll say, A, B, D, E is going to be what? It's going to be the gross area minus how many bolt holes are we going to subtract? Two. So two AH. And how many, well, how, about, how many stagger factors are we going to add? Zero. So this is just going to be, what's the gross area again? 6.5 minus two times what's a whole area? Bless you. equals. Maybe I should go ahead and put that up here. So the gross area So what do we get? So 5. Point, we'll say 5.41 just to keep it simple. Sound good? So tell me, um, if this is the formula for the first path, what's the formula for the second path? How many holes are we going to subtract? Three. And how many stagger factors are we going to add? 
two, but two different ones. There we go. So we'll say A, N, A, B, C, D, E, gross area minus three plus the stagger factor for the first one plus the stagger factor for the second one. So that's going to be 6.5 square inches minus three holes. Plus, so we're going to have, what's the stagger factor? It's S squared times T over 4G, right? So um, S squared is what? Two inches squared times a thickness of, what's the thickness? Five eighths. Over four times G1. I can do better on that one. Plus S squared T over four times three inches. Does this make sense? Everybody okay with this? Anybody got an answer? 5.21. Do I have a second on that? All right. So what is the net area for this connection? 5.21. All right. Any questions? Yes, sir. How often is it that uh, the path with, with most bolt heads wouldn't be the upper end? Well, that's a good question. Uh, um, it depends on just your spacing. Yeah. Like, so it's possible, but how can you? Well, think about it like this. What if, okay, this is a two inch spacing. What if it was three? You know what I mean? That, and that, that's not unheard of. I mean, bulk spacings go anywhere from two inches to three. I mean, three inches is actually a very common bolt increment. So if that was three inches, maybe this one wouldn't have governed. You know what I mean? So it's very possible. You know, very possible. Anybody else? This is good stuff. All right. Um, I do have a little bit of time left, so I want to jump into our our other, I guess, you know, tough theoretical issue with shear lag or with, with tension members and that is shear lag. So let me at least briefly discuss it a little bit and then we'll sort of we'll call it for today and we'll, we'll pick this up, you know, in detail next time. Where did my little clicker go? Ah, there we go. Okay. So this will be a little bit of movie time, but I do want to kind of make sure this makes sense. Okay. Now, to begin my discussion of shear lag, I want to go back to this connection, okay? This is a wide flange section where the bolts are, or where the connect, or the members bolted via the flanges. What's going on with the web? There's nothing there, right? The bolts are here and here, but there's no bolts uh, within the web, okay? Make sense? All right. That, that makes sense from a fabrication standpoint, because if I'm connecting this member to the next one over, that's a really easy way to do it. The problem is that I don't have a uniform connection right around here. The web is not uh, seeing any of that stress directly. I mean, when I yank on this connection, what I'm doing is I'm ultimately yanking on the flanges, right? It's going to take some time for those stresses to permeate throughout the web and throughout the rest of the section, okay? If you go through and, and do this in an experimental setting or do some refined uh, uh, computational modeling, you're going to get something that looks like this. If I take a connection and I start yanking on it, 
the stresses are sort of all over the place. Um, the, I, I sort of think of it akin to, uh, imagine you had a, a really, you know, prismatic and calm creek. You know, you have the water flowing nice and smoothly and evenly. And you throw some big boulders in the creek, right? The water sort of goes all over the place, or it starts splishing and splashing all over the place. Now, later on downstream, the, the effect of those rocks starts to go away and the water goes back to being nice, calm, and serene, right? Make sense? The problem is, when we look at the gross section, you know, FY times the gross area, we don't have to worry about this, but we're not talking about uh, yielding in the gross section. We're talking about fracture in the net section. We have to be able to account for this, okay? Now, there, there's a very specific name for this phenomenon, and it's called shear lag. Because the idea is if I go back to this and I start yanking on this element, while I'm yanking on the flanges, it takes time for those stresses to permeate throughout the web. So the idea is, you know, if I have an element and I'm only yanking on one part of it, one part is seeing the stress. I've still got them. Man. One part is seeing the stress the rest of it is taking a little while to catch up. So inside the element, you kind of have this shear effect going on, and we call that shear lag. To account for shear lag, we use what are called shear lag factors, which are, are abbreviated with the letter U. When we come back from, um, when we come back from uh, uh, my, our, our break, and we'll be back on Friday, we're going to explicitly go through shear lag factors, how we account for that disruption of stress and that discontinuity of stress around the connection and ultimately use that to assess tension member capacity. Sound good? Okay, so next time we'll dig a little deeper into shear lag factors, we'll discuss slenderness and then go through a full-blown uh, example. Sound good? All right, that's all I got. Um, I just realized, did I pass an attendance sheet around? Okay, did everybody sign it? All right, sign that uh, on your way out if you're leaving. If not, just make sure you get that before you leave. And that's all I got. All right, we'll see you.